Let's go ahead and call to order the August 23rd meeting of the uh, Santa Cruz Metro Board of Directors. Uh, we have uh, our safety debriefs. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to go over a few safety um, things about the building. So in the event of evacuation, <laughs> the main evacuation route from this room is directly northwest, the door to the northwest right over here. You go through that door, follow straight outside, and the evacuation area is right by the um, the street um, and the parking lot in, in this section of the of the building. The secondary evacuation route is it is just down the stairs um, and straight out again in the parking lot area. Right there is our evacu is our meeting place for in that in terms of those types of evacuations. Of course, that would be in the fire alarm or something like that that could occur. Um, in the event of medical, does anyone here CBR certified? I know, yeah. Few people, right? Um, we also have a AED uh, defibrillator down located downstairs in the lobby. So, in the event of a medical emergency, uh, we can use the um, the defibrillator downstairs in order to operate the device. All you need to do is turn it on, and it will give you instructions uh, and the steps you need to take um, in order to use the device. Uh, the device will automatically tell you if it can be used or not. Um, the event of an active shooter. Uh, there's three things to remember. The first is if you can get outside, run, get outside, get away from the shooting, uh, the shooter. Um, if you cannot run because your uh, your uh, walkway is blocked, then hide is the next step. And then after that, the last and final thing you, you would have to do if you can't hide and you can't run, you you have to fight and to use whatever tools you can um, to go against the active shooter. Um, in the event of an earthquake, uh, make sure some couple of things to remember. Make sure you get under the desk. If you're by the window, get away from the window um, or you want to be near the walls of the building if you can't get to it underneath the desk. Um, once the earthquake has stopped, um, then you can evacuate. Well, do not go try to leave the building while the earthquake is, is happening. And um, of course, during an earthquake, once an earthquake is happening, do not use the elevator. Uh, once that happens, you have to use the stairs or evacuate through the main evacuation route just behind you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a roll call. <clears throat> Director Brown. Here. Director Downey. Here. Director Dutra. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Present. Director oh, Colin has not joined us. Director Lynn. Here. Director McPherson. Here. Director Newsom is absent today. Director Pagler. Here. Director Key Rose Carter has not joined us yet. And Director Rockton. Here. Ex officio Director Northcutt. Here. Ex officio Director Riskin. Here. And we have quorum. Thank you. Uh, and if uh, Director um, Key Rose Carter and Koenig show up later, uh, we will need to do all of our votes by roll call at that point because we will have. Um, some folks joining us remotely, and we'll need to capture for those responses. FYI. Uh, we'll move now to announcements. Uh, today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Uh, language line services will be providing Spanish interpretation, which will be available during oral communications and for any other agenda item for which these services are needed. Do we have Elena Rodriguez with us? <clears throat> okay, well, we're hoping that they will be showing up. Okay, I will move now to Board of Directors comments. Are there any comments from the board today? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, Danielle, thank your group and your crew for staffing the, the Absence Village role. They they were very professional. The booth was wonderful. And we received a lot of compliments about just their interactions with people. So thank you and well done. Thank you. Thank you. And then I wanted to thank uh, RTC Commissioner Brown and Hagler for strolling from Seacliff uh, with Seacliff neighbor Matt Machado over the freeway and the Aptos Creek Bridge on the future rail trail. You were both very brave. <laughs> and that, that creek's really exciting to walk over. And um, 
I just appreciate you representing Metro and your introductions and giving us kids what really appreciated your work. Yeah. All right, any further comments from the board? Seeing none, uh, we will go to oral and written communications. Uh, do we have any written communications? Just the one that I sent out last night. Go ahead. Uh, and now is the time. Oh, yes, I see that. Thank you. Um, and now is the time for anyone who has any verbal comments for the board. Uh, now is the opportunity for you uh, to address us this morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Portia Raymer. Today, I want to tell you about a problem or obstacle I am experiencing that you could solve. I would like to start getting more involved in the Santa Cruz County Fair. I would specifically like to help with setting up and tearing down, particularly with the Home Arts Department, as well as consulting with the safety and logistics team in regards to ADA related issues. <clears throat> These things are a natural progression to other volunteer work I already do in the county. The problem is because my main mode of transportation within the county is the Santa Cruz met metro system. And currently, even with all the wonderful changes that have been made and are in the works to happen, the buses only go to the fairground when the fair itself is running or on weekends. This means that the public cannot take public transportation to help set up for the fair because this takes place before the free buses to, to the fair are running also means members of the public cannot take public transportation to help tear down from the fair as that happens after the fair and thus the buses that are running. <clears throat> In addition, this means that members of the public cannot take public transportation to attend the public or the open to the public Santa Cruz Fair board meetings as they normally take place on a Tuesday. They do not follow a strict schedule. We do, however, give at least 10 days notice of when they're going to be. Having the bus stop at the fairgrounds would allow for these things to occur and would allow me and other mobility limited persons to schedule a pair of cruise ride for these events. Even if the bus only stopped there as requested. For example, if the 79 only went to the fairgrounds Monday through Friday when a rider requested the stop when they got on the bus or when someone called and requested a ride from the fairgrounds. Directions on how to do this could be posted with the schedule and at the fairground bus stop. Furthermore, while we are talking about public transportation at the fairground, the bus stop there is an NTLC. It's located in a very inconvenient location, so much so that I have heard it will be moved for the fair this year. I happen to know that the current fair manager would be happy to work with Santa Cruz Metro to create a bus stop that is one wouldn't have to be moved for the fair or other really large events. And two, is actual wheelchair friendly. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Oxa Slayer, and I am a former 15-year resident of the San Lorenzo Valley, and I recently moved in the city of Santa Cruz. Um, I'm here as a citizen, but I also uh, work for the university in a professional capacity and been working with Metro and with Ed University, but here on to today as a resident, and I wanted to offer um, uh, some praise to Metro. I don't know how often to get praise in these meetings, um, but I've been a public servant for 20 years, and I know it's, it's very rare, so I just wanted to share uh, my thanks with uh, the service that you provide to San Lorenzo Valley, and that service on the 35 is a lifeline for many. Um, I use transit, but I also drive a car. I ride a bike, and I'm a pedestrian. Uh, but I have children, and the, the free fare pass, I don't know how long that program will continue, but um, it's been wonderful for my kids to get around. I still have a, a non-driver in the household in middle school, and uh, she uses it to get to um, boxing lessons in Scotts Valley, 
to visit friends in um, Santa Cruz. So thank you for offering that program to the youth. I think it's highly beneficial, really value that. Um, I hope we can continue uh, to promote that <clears throat> specifically for the San Lorenzo Valley uh, kids that are really isolated up in the valley. Um, and it's it's a great way for them to foster some independence and also a love for transit. So thank you for that. Um, also wanted to thank Metro for uh, what you've done downtown. I know it's a bit chaotic with the, the uh, Pacific Station project, I think it's called, the new transit center and the buses are all over the place. Um, but it's working and I love the red paint in downtown for the buses and the bikes. Um, <laughs> So continue, uh, I appreciate the, the work that Metro is doing with the city to continue prioritizing transit and bike infrastructure um, in the city. Um, I'm now a resident of Seabright in the city of Santa Cruz. And um, before the 3A service was uh, truncated, I did enjoy taking the 3A from Capitola Mall direct to the university. And I know that there's some work to, to bring that back. Uh, we're, we're excited to support you on that on a professional uh, front with the university, working with Metro staff on, on that, what we can do to support that direct service. I will say that um, I've been using B-Cycle from Seabright and I can actually get from my door <clears throat> to the university in about 20 minutes on a B-Cycle. I took the 3A uh, just this week and transfer downtown to the 19th, took it to campus, got off at the main gate, walked, and that was a 50 minute commute for me um, with that transfer. Um, so I hope we can bring back that direct service. I know there's a lot of um, smart minds and um, working on that issue. So I wanted to thank you for that. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate your comments. Hi, welcome. Good, uh, good morning, Eduardo Montesino. I just want to update you again, you know, on our re recording. Um, we, we are almost at fully staff coming up the next Monday after Labor Day for the paratransit side. Um, we got a little bit more way to go um, uh, on the bus uh, on the bus side, but you know, uh, since I, I started uh, started helping HR uh, with with their help, we process. Or probably 400, but you know, applicants. Um, we've hired over a hundred people um, on the bus side. Uh, you know, about probably 15 to 20 in paratransit. You know, now mechanics. We're almost at 20 staff. You know, so uh, we uh, it went a long way in a short period of time, but we're there. Um, but I want to really thank you know the HR leadership. You know. Ann and Sophie, you know, just all around my, my recruiting team, you know, Carlos Vargas, you know, people that help me do, do interviews. We have supervisors, um, you know, bus drivers. We, so we, we, you know, have gone a long way, but working together is what got us here. Working together is what, you know, uh, that's where the reason we're at almost full staff. So just wanted to give you that update. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? Seeing none, we will move on now to labor organization communications. Morning. Good morning. I've been in front of you guys before. Uh, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Jaime Rodriguez. I go by Jay. I'm the newly elected uh, general chairperson for our local 22. Uh, I've reached out to some of you guys. Thank you for answering my call, my messages. Shiba, Michael, uh, Kristen, thank you very much. Jimmy, I appreciate uh, all the support you guys have given me. I'm looking forward to working with all of you guys, you know, for, for, for a greater good, greater good in Metro. Um, my predecessor is James Sandoval and Brandon Freeman. They lift big shoes too. I plan to do that. I plan to do the best I can. And I hope I don't, anybody don't especially get this. Any questions for me? Oh, thank you. No, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay. Uh, let's see, we're on item eight. Do we have any additional documentation to support existing agenda items? There are none. Okay. So that will bring us to our consent agenda. Uh, is there anyone on the board that wants to pull an item from consent? 
Seeing none, do we have mm -hmm. any public comment on our consent agenda? Seeing none, uh, we will, yes. All right, we have a motion from Director Rockin and a second from Director Tinker. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Colin Harry Johnson? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director Manson Pearson? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Key Rose Carter? Aye. Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Great. We will move on now to our regular agenda. Uh, item number 10 is presentation of employee longevity awards uh, from July and August. My goodness, we have uh, quite a few uh, dedicated employees that have been here for quite a while. So uh, for 10 years, we have Jose Regoza Ramirez, uh, a mechanic two. For another uh, 10 year recognition for Dario Rocha, also a mechanic two. 15 years, we have Clarence Aragon, a bus operator. Also 15 years, Julio Garcia Velasco, a bus operator also. 25 years, we have Salvador Calderon, a bus operator. Another 25 year recognition for Eduardo Montesino, uh, our transit supervisor. And 35 years for Sergio Lona Gonzalez, also a bus operator. My goodness, congratulations. Let's get it. Thank you. Eduardo, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you for 25 years. You want to say hi? You're getting old there. 25 years. Thank you. It's not open up. Usually I don't prepare for this because I kind of nice surprise. But I did. I wasn't sure. Uh, this I imagine a few minutes here. Huh? So, um, you know, 25 years or so that is, is that's lots of years. I started when I was 22 years of age, and, and I've been here for uh, more than half my lifetime. I've raised my family here, um, uh, and my three kids are part of the Metro family and used the services all the time. I can also share with you that I grew up here in the age, and I was a very shy kid. You don't realize yeah. <laughs> no. then to now. Um, um, but I was uh, brought up by lots of uh, parent co-workers. Um, I, I was at, at one point the youngest bus driver here, you know, and because okay, of the average age for at that time for my co-worker was 25 years. And all the talk uh, with them was, you know, uh, looking at retirement. Um, so, you know, the big, uh, so, uh, but the joy for me was meeting all those great people. Um, I learned lots of things, uh, work related, but a, a lot of it was life lessons. Um, I was a proud bus driver for 20 years, led the union um, 11 years, which gave me an opportunity to work with uh, the agency, as Measure D, Cabrillo, um, Cabrillo College student team, among other things always looking at ways to um, help agency in the community. The transition to supervisor five years ago since uh, um, uh, was uh, uh, nice, but uh, I still identify myself as a bus operator. But since October, I've been re recruiting, 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 uh, which means uh, it's uh, successful. And people ask me, but you know, uh, how did it, you know, how did it happen, you know, uh, but it's, but it's because I love this agency. So it's very easy to talk about it. It's very easy to promote it because who doesn't want to work for Metro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, believe me, uh, um, uh, I want to thank um, lots of people, but I, uh, like I said, uh, and, and some of those people are no longer with us, but it would take me a long time. But some of the um, the people that are really on the thing because they gave me you know opportunities, they gave me uh, um, some advice, and uh, along the years is you know um, our general manager Les White, you know uh, union leader Bonnie Moore, Sierra Gary was the operations manager, Mary Ferret 
you know, I was also, you know, um, a, a superintendent. Uh, the uh, a driver, Domingo Tobar, is no longer here with us. And Manuel Martinez was a supervisor. I want to thank all those people, but like I said, I could, you know, go on and go on. But it, but like I said, it was it was just the the Metro family that I that I grew up in, and I will continue to be here for still hopefully more years to come. So thank you. Thank you. Do you have any public comments on this? Yes, please. I'll be brief, but um, to all the bus operators in the room, I just wanted to give a shout out. Uh, living in San Lorenzo Valley, again, um, Highway 9 is not the easiest road to drive on, but the Metro drivers are so amazing, and um, they know that road really well. Not only that, but I really appreciate even the newer drivers and the old veteran drivers. Veteran drivers, they're not old. Um, just the kindness. I really appreciate the kindness that the drivers bring um, when you board the board the bus, whether it's a smile or a hello or being helpful about a transfer. Uh, just thanks to all the bus operators for great driving and great service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Director Atkins. All right. I'm probably belaboring the obvious, but I want to say about Eduardo, it, it's such a great example of someone who doesn't just think of himself as like the cognitive machine or filling some little slot or piece, um, but takes the initiative to, to really make a difference for the people that he works with. And he's not the only one in this agency that does that, but he's been the best example of someone who just gone beyond what people have asked of him to really make this transition from his to me. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's what I said. Oh, thank you, Mario, for your hard work. I know that when we had the steps to the bus driver, he jumped right into it. And I see those signs with holes all over town. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we can get those upgraded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, thank you for, you know, helping. There was a lot of stress, you know, the lack of bus drivers. And um, you really stepped in. And, and over the years, I've been doing this. I can't, I mean, I just, I looked at 25 and I just thought, because we're the same age. <laughs> You're older. Uh, but I was like, damn, that's a long time. Like, uh, that's that's like I'm now reflecting on my own life. So <laughs> but um, here's to many more years. So thanks, Gordo. Well, congratulations to everyone, and and I echo um, the comments made, oh, Eduardo. Thank you so much for all of your years of service. Uh, oh, my apologies, Vanessa. Yes. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to echo uh, everything that everyone is saying. Thank you to all of our longtime employees, especially to you, Eduardo. Um, I see you all the time out at our events, um, you know, recruiting for new bus operators. And it, you talk to the community. You make people feel really welcome. You talk up Metro. So, again, just wanted to thank you for all your service and for always going above and beyond. Thank you. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on to item 11, uh, retiree resolutions of appreciation. And so we have a couple folks. We have Hung Lee, a bus operator, Del Vicetta, a bus operator, Angel Valdez, a bus operator, and Israel Zaragoza, a paratransit operator, all retiring. Let's please also give them a round of applause for their hard work. Okay, we have a, a motion from Rodkin and a second from uh, Lynn, but before we do our vote, we're going to take it out to public comment on this item. Uh, uh, good morning, y'all. Um, I'm Nita Brego. Y'all see my face uh, a couple times. Uh, I just wanted to speak on behalf of uh, Israel Saragossa. Uh, in the 15 years that I was a paratransit driver, you know, he was there uh, long before I was. Um, uh, he's, he's one of the examples of people who go uh, do a lot for um, outside of their own lives to to give back to 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 the community and uh, our our paratransit transit drivers are free. It's a lot smaller department than the bus operators and and everybody really kind of gets to know each other a lot more. Um, I just wanted to share my appreciation of working with him and and watching him take on 
uh, extra duties, willing to work overtime uh, and and make sure that that one of the most you know uh, I think under underserved communities um, just about anywhere uh, in the United States is is uh, is well served and people get to live their lives with with dignity um, and have been able to uh, serve their community like like they want to and when it's asked of them. Uh, so I just, I just wanted to say I was very proud I've worked along him uh, along his side for 15 years. And uh, he'll, I want to say he'll be enjoying retirement, but he's probably going to find something else to work on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any further public comment? All right, we'll bring it back to the board. Uh, we had a motion by Director Rodkin and a second by Director Lynn. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Colin Terry Johnson? Aye. Director Lee? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director T. Rose Carter? Aye. And Director Ryan? Aye. Uh, we are now on item 12, California Public Employees Pension Reform Act of 2013, or PEPRA litigation update. We'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, so lots of good vibes in the room, and I'm about to kill them. Oh. <laughs> I apologize in advance. <laughs> I'll sneak out of here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you, well, so every once in a while we hear about the PEPRA litigation, what's going on with it, and there hasn't been too much going on with it. Lately, we had really good news in 2022. I'm going to give you a little bit of background, but we've got an update, and it's not good. Um, so. For those of you who don't remember, um, so, uh, you know, PEPRA was passed, I think, in 2013. And then there are what are called federal transit worker protections, 13C protections. Every time a grantee like Metro has a grant submitted to the FTA, unions have the right to object to the certification of those grants. Normally, they don't. Everything goes through, everything's fine. However, after PEPRA, which was the Pension Reform Act, was passed, the ATU started to object to grants being certified and saying PEPRA conflicts with these transit worker protections under federal law. And so they're saying the DOL should not certify grants. In 2019, under the Trump administration, um, the ATU sued because the DOL said, in their interpretation, PEPRA did not conflict and would not prevent the certification of grants. In 2021, there was a new administration, the Biden administration, and the DOL changed its mind and reversed its opinion and issued a letter, I call it the 2021 letter, saying it disagreed with the Trump administration's interpretation and it would, in fact, not certify grants because of PEPRA. In 2022, this is the good news I referenced, a district court issued a permanent injunction and said basically they disagreed with the DOL's interpretation and the DOL was permanently enjoined from not certifying grants. So everybody at transit agencies breathed a sigh of relief the grants would flow, they wouldn't be objected to, they, they would be certified, and the money is going to flow, no problem. So that opinion was appealed to the Ninth Circuit. Oral arguments were heard this year, so uh, a couple of years after the district court's injunction. During oral arguments, and it was a three-judge panel, the judges were, at least two of the three judges, basically had concern about whether it was right for adjudication. And I apologize that this is so legalistic, but basically saying that the 2021 letter that the injunction was based on was not really a decision by the DOL. It was a letter that said, we think we're going to not certify grants, but it was not a decertification. So there was no official real DOL decision so that's what happened during oral arguments. Well, just like I think a month or so ago, the Ninth Circuit published its opinion. It reflects oral arguments. 
and they are sending the case back to the circuit court to dismiss it, saying it's not right for adjudication. So what does this mean? What it means is that injunction from 2022 is no longer going to be in place. Now, I thought, well, the TL is not going to do anything during election season, right? <laughs> I was wrong. Mm -hmm. They have indicated, we just found out this week, that on se September 20th, they are going to stop certifying grants. That means the money is going to stop flowing to California transit agencies if they don't get their grant request letters in, in time. So I believe, and we might touch on this, Metro has already sent in. We expect the district court to dismiss the case on September 19th. And then on September 20th, the DOL is going to stop certifying grants. So everybody's rushing to get their grants in now so that they can get certified before September 20th. That would take care of this year. What's going to happen next, we don't know. I'm imagining either the state will appeal the Ninth Circuit ruling and it could go to like a full panel or, you know, it could go to the Supreme Court. We don't know. Um, or maybe the DOL will refuse to certify a grant, which would actually be a real decision. And then maybe that gets taken to the district court, which could then issue a permanent injunction. But so at this point, we don't know. It's not good news. Everything could change again if the administration changes. I personally am not hoping for that on a personal level and just for transit health in general. Um, but but we just don't know what's going to happen at this point. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, I need to be schooled on this because my understanding was that what it meant was that if a union protested, to do the application and yeah. we turn it down. But if you if you were getting along well with your unions and nobody had a particular reason to fight you in your grants, this wouldn't I mean it's always a threat that could be used in the event of a labor action or something, but but it's not an automatically they won't fight your grants. That's don't. correct. Somebody would have to object. So if the ATU objects, and it doesn't have to be your union. So, so your unions might be just fine, and they might want, yeah. you know, SCIU and SMART. Right, but ATU could object to anybody's grant. Hmm. Uh, and do they have, is there anything in the ruling about what are their bases for such objections? Or do they have to have any cause at all? Or just, we don't, There's just nothing. don't give them the money. There's nothing in the ruling that talks about that. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it was the rest of the family. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting because holding these funds just keeps their employees from getting work. So have, do you think that they'll just keep doing it every time? Is there is there a consistent complaint that they have? Or do or do they yes. have to even state what it is? Well, the specific complaint is they don't want their union members to be subject to PEPRA. So it all comes mm -hmm. back to PEPRA, which they feel, the ATU and maybe other unions feel, is not as protective to the union members as the federal transit worker protections under what used to be called 13C and it's something else now. So that's that's the whole thing, and that's where this all arose. There's no they may not object to your grants. May not. That's the risk. You don't know. But I'll keep you all posted. Add on to that. Uh, so the California Transit Association is actively working on this with the governor's office. Uh, they reached out to all the transit systems to find out uh, what effect it will have and what grants uh, we, each agency has that, that need to still be funded. And so hopefully there'll be some some work or some progress through that avenue. And yes, we have uh, submitted every grant we can uh, to FTA. And that's how we found out about the, uh, the September 20th uh, deadline, which was news to even uh, the California Transit Association. So uh, 
Yeah, probably be more to come. In granite stage, you read the opinion. Oh, wait. Um, I'm going to say somewhere in the 10 to me. Maybe more. Maybe it could be more than that. Uh, it might be more in the 20. But we have a number of grants from our 5307 operating grants. We have a 5339 uh, capital grant, low, low mission, no mission grant for buses. So we've been. And we're really successful over the last couple of years getting grants and, and we've been waiting to to draw down on those until we get projects going or, or start receiving but with this understanding you've got this deadline of trying to now get them all certified and in a state that you can get in. Do we have public comments on this item? Seeing none, uh, we'll bring it back to the board. So that was just an update. We don't have any action on this item. So we'll go to our CEO oral report. Okay. Uh, so we have the uh, Santa Cruz County Fair coming up September 11th to 15th. Uh, we'll be offering free rides on uh, Route 79 F and 79. And with that, anybody that does ride one of those routes will receive a discount uh, on their fare tickets, which I don't know how much fare tickets cost, but they're going to get a $7 off uh, voucher that they'll be getting if they, if they take the bus. So it's a considerable savings. On uh, September 12th, uh, our fall service will begin. We'll be adding in uh, two additional uh, round trips on Highway 17. Uh, Express. Uh, our Route 73 will extend from Capitola Mall to the Watsonville Transit Center. And Route 35 weekend frequency will be improved every 30 minutes. And Route 16, uh, the school term uh, service return. Route 16 school term service returns. Um, uh, September 26th, the Metro staff will be participating in an agency summit hosted by Monterey Salinas, uh, along with San Luis Obispo, uh, Monterey Salinas, Santa Barbara, and San Benito County Transit Agencies. On October 3rd uh, will be the California Clean Air Day. That will be offering uh, free fares countywide on that day. And then on October 19th, so put this on your calendar, we'll be having our uh, Metro Bus Rodeo, which uh, employees really enjoy seeing uh, board members. So if you can attend, it'd be really good. I hear it's a great event. It's fun. It's very good. Yeah, it is. I'm looking forward to it. Great. October 19th? October 19th. Uh, let's see. And Eduardo gave an update of uh, we did a number of hirings uh, since June. We've hired 17 bus operators, one paratransit operator, three mechanics, uh, vehicle service workers. So quite a bit. And thank you to our staff for the hard work on that. Uh, getting that many people in the door, you guys, since October is a, a tremendous accomplishment. But, uh, Think very many agencies across the U.S. have been that successful. Been great. Uh, leadership Santa Cruz County uh, class 38 is starting, and uh, participating in that is Danielle uh, Juan Serrano, who is a supervisor in Santa Cruz, and myself. So looking forward to learning more about Santa Cruz. It's a great program. Yeah. Have you enjoyed it? Uh, one last thing, the uh, one of the one ride at a time videos uh, that was created uh, it made it as a finalist in the 2024 Star Awards hosted by uh, Capio and awarded to the Southern California, awarded by the Southern California Nevada chapter of NATOM. We all know what that acronym is, right? <laughs> um, it's actually the National Association of Telecommunications Officers of America. So uh, these awards recognize excellence in government video programming 
And the one right at the end video is a finalist in the community awareness category. So we'll find out more uh, at the end of September if we win that award. So I'm almost almost the four months mm -hmm. that I've been here. Um, and I like that. <laughs> it's actually it's been it's been awesome. Um, we have uh, we have an amazing uh, group of employees here that are passionate about the success of Metro, uh, who want to see us improve, uh, not only through service, but also through work culture, uh, working on uh, improving uh, relationships and helping uh, make sure that everybody uh, knows that their voice is heard and that they, they matter to, to us. Uh, it's been, uh, yeah, I haven't regretted uh, making the decisions. To, to come here, it's been it's been fantastic, and my family has absolutely loved it. So, uh, which I was worried since I uprooted my daughter, who was going to be a senior in high school, and uh, but she's actually she's starting tennis today. She's doing the tennis game, so uh, it's been it's been a really good experience. So I, I'm just uh, really happy to be here. That's in my report. Um, just a couple comments um, A note that that October 19th is just after the Cal Cities Conference, which is in Southern California. So some of us uh, who serve on city councils may still be gone. I think I missed it last year, too. Celebrate my birthday. Oh, <laughs> so, or we come back. Yeah. Or that morning or. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, so there's there may be that comfort for some of us, right, including me. Um, and then I just wanted to acknowledge Danielle for um, getting us to be a finalist in this competition. Um, it says a lot about the, your work and your team's work and the work of the Metro. And just here in the community, that work has, I've noticed, shifted, um, shifted the narrative about Metro out in the community. People are talking about the buses. Some people are riding the buses. Um, definitely young people. I mean, I have two teenagers and I hear their friends talking about riding the buses. And I think a lot of it is the work that you and your team have done and, and really communicating and articulating what we're about visually. So hopefully we win. So definitely. thank you. Yes, just a couple of days. I kind of wanted, I got here a little bit late, um, but I walked in on the fairgrounds bus lot conversation. And um, I, I think that, you know, the fairgrounds is always trying to improve improvements around their facilities and they're willing to step up and make those financial investments. So I think that might be a good partnership to work with if they want to put in a, you know, a bus stop and they probably want to maybe fair theme it or something, you know what I'm saying? So um, that way it, it could be, you know, that, I think that's a nice collaboration mm -hmm. if it's possible. Um, and then hopefully you get to see the fair this year. So <laughs> it's small, yeah. but it's, it's, yeah. it's small, but, but um, it is nice when our buses are there and um, there's a lot of school uh, field trips and, you know, people, I always watch people walk with the buses and it really gives them a nice introduction to bus system, you know. Um, and then second, I kind of made a joke about it earlier, but maybe if we are going to continue doing our, um, I, I was noticing we're hiring bus operators and then we're losing bus operators. So it seems like we're, it's, you know, we're yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe get a little upgrade on those signs because like people always do comment on them. They're like, why are there holes in that sign, those other the signs, and they kind of do look a little like run down. So I think that was intentional. Oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> was it so you could put your face through them? Yeah. Um, but if we can help you, whoever's, you know, in charge of it. Yeah. Well, it was you know, a game where you could like throw something in the yeah. hole, you know, like, um, was that I'm not, <laughs> why is it not on red? Like, you're just, it's, just, it's just very simple explanation. Um, well, it's because we uh, uh, we started with those signs and we had bonuses um, oh. signs for the signs. So then we're at the tail end at that time where uh, I thought we we're going to get, you know, because my goal at the beginning with, uh, when Michael Trey asked me was 60 operators. It ended up being more as we went along. So, uh, you know, a good Mexican nice to say, so I just... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we got the bonus. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, thank the um, time to save money. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Uh, any more comments from the board? Okay, any public comment on this item? Saying none, we'll bring it back. Uh, and that brings us to the end of our meeting. So uh, our next meeting will be Friday, September 27th at 9 a.m. here in the Metro Admin offices. Uh, until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you then.